Welcome today to the broadcast. Uh, it's, uh, this is Roger Hutchins uh, coming to you and I have something stirring in my heart I want to talk to you about. I'm trying to uh, come to you uh, a couple times a week plus the Wednesdays when Cheryl and I both come to you. Uh, but I really feel a stirring in my heart today uh, about the Word of God. You know, I was praying about what to bring to the program today and how to uh, how to minister uh what's in my heart, uh, you know, there's so many things go on. Over the past years, it seems like the body of Christ has had such distraction. Uh, but here today, we're, we're going to try to focus back on some things that really matter. We're going to start looking at uh, some things that God really is uh, speaking to us, excuse me, for tending to some technical stuff as we go along here. But... Um, <clears throat> But here, as we come to this program today, uh, we're, we're at um, over a year and a half into <clears throat> what the world has called a pandemic, into what, <coughs> excuse me, uh, into things that have been um, not only for the church, it's been, it's been uh, depressing for the church, it's been uh, like a, a battle sometimes in people's minds, not to those of us that have chosen to walk in faith, it's not other than uh, for uh, services canceled for ministries and different things. But uh, I see the world. I see people out that, that uh, sometimes I don't even identify with going to church, but they're good people. Uh, but they, uh, uh, but they're, 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 there's a, a look on their faces of what's going on, what, what's next, what can we uh, look at that will... Uh, that will help us to uh, help us to go forward with life. Uh, and you know, one thing I have to look at as I go uh, in, into this is what's God's purpose. You know, everybody needs to know God's purpose in their life. Everybody needs to see it. Everybody needs to know it. And if we desire to walk in the purpose of God, then God will lead us and guide us and direct us. Uh, you know, sometimes we think, well, uh, you know, is God really leading me? Is God really guiding me? Is God really uh, showing me the way that I should go? Uh, you know, sometimes circumstances, there were, there were times whenever God, and I'm, I'm rambling on before I get in the Word, but not really rambling because I'm feeling, uh, feeling the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray in a minute, and I want to get into, into some Scripture. Uh, but uh, in this day, whenever uh, people are, are bewildered some, somehow with, uh, with questions, they're bewildered with uh, what's next. Not even, even if they're not Christians, there's a bewilderness uh, upon the people. But you know what? Those that do know their God. See, there's a, there is something we need to understand, that we need to know God and know Him in the power of His resurrection. And when we do that, whenever we, we uh, get close to God, and whenever we uh, know that we, uh, when we know that we uh, are in relationship with Him, then we can stand our ground. Why? Because we know we have Him standing with us. We know that uh, the Scripture says He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And so today, you and I need to know that He is still the answer for us, for you and me as the born again. Uh, you know, we, then, then Him living in us becomes the answer for those that are bewildered in the world, those that are looking for answers. They've got, uh, we, we've got to give them the answer who is in us, the Christ in us, the hope of glory. Now, uh, let's pray before we go forward. And I want you... Uh, to get everything you can get out of this program. I, we, we probably aren't going to finish the whole thing today because I'm, I'm staying within the 30 minutes because we got uh, we have folks that are putting us on television stations around the world. Uh, so we are trying to uh, keep it in the time frame that they need to put it on the television stations because our my outreach, my hope, right now we're working and praying on some things in, in the local area, the local church, in the local area, but we also still have that world vision. We also still have that vision and desire 
to see Christ being made famous all over the world. So I want to invite you today to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. I want you to pray with me. I want to invite you to come and call upon the name of the Lord. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. The scripture says, then you are saved. So will you do that with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you today, God, that one that has uh, been struggling with, with this for years and been struggling with whether or not they should become a Christian, whether or not they should become uh, born again. And Father, all they have to do is believe in their heart and confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus. And God, their heart's been dealing with them all, already. But God, I thank you, Lord, as they call upon you, Father. God, you bring them into the kingdom of God. You bring them... Uh, into a place where they can see and enter into the kingdom of God and their ears are open they begin to glean out of what we're preaching today and we give you praise and honor and glory for that in Jesus name amen amen well stay with us because we're going to do some additional praying hopefully at the end we'll have time and I uh, want, want to talk to you comment and let us know you're watching if you will uh, and, and where you're watching from it helps us to know uh, and, you know, we've got people in, in Pakistan and India and Thailand and uh, Africa and Central America and South America, uh, Canada, all, all in many different places. Um, uh, England has uh, got a group watching, so uh, let's continue to uh, move forward in the Word of God. Right now, the, the, the focus that the church needs uh, you know, I was looking at talking about some church government and some errors and some problems I see, but I realized that that was from my perspective and that uh, if we will begin to focus on Jesus, on the gospel and on what God wants us to focus on and begin to understand what covenant we're walking in, then God will build, Jesus will build his church. Now in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, and uh, uh, beginning with the 8th verse, uh, it says, and there's other, it'd be worth your time to go back and read before the 8th verse because it begins to bring this into focus because without understanding the context it's in, uh, then we kind of lose track of the meaning of what Hebrews uh, 13, 8 is saying. But he says, uh, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever now i think somebody said well that's bad english to put all those ands in there and i thought so too when i first saw it but then i realized that there was an emphasis that there it's it's he's the same yesterday and today and forever it all goes together it all comes into eternity uh because jesus christ uh is felt, what, what did he mean by that now, sometimes I, I hear people use that scripture and they use it kind of out of context and I've done it before. But God began to open this up to me to begin to see some things here. Uh, what he's talking about, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same, let me put it like this, <clears throat> the way I'm hearing it. The same blood that Jesus shed yesterday is just as powerful today and will be just as powerful forever in other words there there's no undoing what jesus did he's the same yesterday today and forever now let's look into that a little bit deeper uh, because he first of all he goes back here now and begins to look at some some things relating to this uh in yesterday because although uh Jesus only came to the earth as a man and, and became the lamb that takes away the sin of the world a little over 2,000 years ago. Uh, we can look back through the Old Testament. We can back, look back through the prophets and the, uh, the scriptures all the way through. We can look at the types and shadows even under the, the law and the Mosaic tabernacle. Uh, I want to invite you to go back on our Facebook page and read our writings. I've studied... Uh, the Bible, I've studied men with, that walked in Revelation, uh, and I've, I've gleaned some things. Uh, we're, I'm in the process right now of, of putting some other things together, writing a book on the tabernacle and seeing our salvation in those types and shadows. Uh, somebody said, well, why do you want to see, see types and shadows before? Because it's in the types and shadows that the revelation of Jesus Christ begins to come alive. 
Even the book of Revelations, whenever it said this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, and it signified that he comes in, in signs and, and, and in sig uh, things that, that, that gives us, give us signals of what he's done, of who he is, and, and how powerful he is. But it said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Verse 9 says, And be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. Now, let me tell you, he's not changing subjects here. Uh, he's still talking in that, in that concept of Jesus Christ being the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because whatever Jesus was yesterday, he is today. Whatever he is today, he's going to be tomorrow and forever. What do you mean by that? Well, we, we'd have to really go into, and, and time today is not going to allow me to get into all of that, but it, you'd have to go back into John 14 and, and see the progression and how the, that Jesus and the Father are one in the Holy Ghost. And whenever, that, whenever he came in the power of the Holy Ghost, he was spirit before he came to the earth. Jesus uh, Christ in the beginning was the word the word was with God this is John the first chapter and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God about the 14th verse it says and the word became flesh and dwelt among us so uh, that word from the very beginning the logos of God from the very beginning now whenever Jesus came to the earth he became a rhema he became a current word a present word uh, in the earth and so we're looking now for that same present word. What is he today? What is Jesus today? Jesus is spirit because he went back to the Father. Jesus is spirit. And then in that spirit form, he came back on the day of Pentecost. This is not in my notes at all. But I just feel Holy Ghost, somebody needs to hear this today. Uh, on the day of Pentecost, he came back in like a, like a mighty Russian wind. Uh, see our... our uh, teaching Cheryl and I on Wednesday, we've been, we've been teaching on uh, on the Holy Spirit. See those uh, teachings and go back and watch those videos. But um, but let me read this ninth verse again. But be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. What's this relating to? It's relating to uh, people who would try to take that Jesus and try to. Uh, conform him through their teaching, conform him through their concept of who he's supposed to be, uh, but he's the same yesterday and forever. Carried about with strange doctrines, for it is, it is a good thing that the heart, watch this, now this is very important, that the heart, so we're relating Jesus Christ being the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means if you're on top of the mountain today and tomorrow you you are feeling like you're down in the valley. Now, I don't like down in the valley songs and stuff, so I'm not going to even dare to sing one. But, uh, uh, but, but let me tell you what, Jesus is the same no matter what you're feeling. He's the same no matter what you're going through. He's the same... If all Hades breaks loose, I'm trying to trying to say it very nicely because I'm on. But but he's the same. If 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 the the universe goes into chaos, Jesus Christ is the same, and that's why that we got to understand our trust is not in uh, science, it's not in pol politics, it's not in all these other things. But our trust is in God. See, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and forever. Now I don't. Want Get, I don't want to stray too far that way because we don't want to focus on the valley and the mountain right here. We want to focus on Jesus because that's the gospel, folks. That's the gospel. Preach the gospel. God, God. Uh, even this morning, whenever I was studying, preparing, God, God pulled me away from something because I, I, I've seen some abuses uh, in church government. I've seen some abuses in all this other stuff uh, that goes on. But see, the reason is we quit looking at He who is the builder of the church, who is Jesus. So we're going we're gonna to begin to focus the next few programs that I'm teaching here on Jesus and on who He is. He's the same yesterday and today and forever. All together, and, 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 uh, coming together. And He says, our hearts established with grace. Now, when grace comes, 
Grace establishes you. There's a lot of message about grace today. I'm a grace preacher. By grace are you saved. I was thankfully, wonderfully saved by grace. And I believe in the grace of God. Uh, but see, many times I see people that grab uh, the, a message of grace and they run with it and they don't get let their heart get established. Uh, how do you get established? Well, first of all, you get established in that relationship, in that knowledge that it's Jesus Christ that the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change gears every uh, every time you turn around. He doesn't. He's the same, and he's going to bring forth truth. He's going to reveal the Father uh, every time. The, the the words that I speak unto you, they're spirit and life. He said, "All right, let your hearts be established in grace." And this. I looked at this because I, I never could understand until God began to open this thing up to me this morning. It says, uh, not with meat. And I thought, well, what, what does eating meat have to do with that? And he's not talking about not steaks and pork chops and, and this kind of stuff here. 